Hello Imogen, hello Josh, Granny here again. Sorry it's been ages since my last story, but I've picked a couple of good ones for you. So I'll read them one at a time, one perhaps more for Imogen and one for Josh. And I'll do them separately so you don't have to listen to them both together. So the first story I've got is an old fairy tale. And I think it's one that you probably know, but it's quite a good story. And it's called Puss in Boots. And it's a nice book with some good pictures. So I thought this would be a good one to read. And you can see that lovely puss is a ginger, stripy pussycat, not like Oscar and Charlie, who of course are very, very black cats. So, Puss in Boots. Once upon a time, there was a miller who had three sons. When the miller died, he left the mill to his eldest son and a donkey to his second son. They were able to set to work straight away. But all that was left for the youngest son was his father's cat. There you are. Can you see the youngest son with the cat? Poor puss, said the miller's son. How should we manage? Don't worry, said the cat. Give me a pair of boots and a bag and we will do very well together. When the miller's son brought the things the cat wanted, puss got ready. He put on his boots and left the bag filled with lettuce leaves in a field. Very soon, a little rabbit came to nibble the lettuce. Look, there he is. Nibbling the lettuce. You can't really see the rabbit, can you? But you can see Puss with his boots. Quick as a flash, Puss caught the rabbit in his bag and carried it to the king's palace. Your Majesty, said Puss, please accept this fine rabbit as a present from my master, the Marquis of Carabas. I've never heard of him, said the king, but you deserve a treat from the kitchen. There's the king. The next day, Puss heard that the king and his daughter would be driving by the river. Master, he said, do what I say and we shall be rich. You must take off your clothes and swim in the river. And you must believe that your name is the Marquis of Carabas. I've never heard of him, said the miller's son, but I'll do as you say, Puss. There they are standing by the river bank. What is he up to? Before long, the king drove past with his daughter, the princess. He was pleased to see Puss again. Your majesty, said Puss, bowing low. A very terrible thing has happened. My master, the Marquis of Carabas, was swimming in the river when some thieves came and stole all his clothes. How dreadful, exclaimed the king and the princess together. There they are in their carriage. The king sent off to the palace at once for some clothes. And when the miller's son put them on, he looked very handsome. Please come and ride in our carriage, said the king. May I present my daughter? And there is the miller's son with very fine clothes, fit for a prince. Puss ran quickly on ahead. When he saw some men making hay in a field, he shouted to them, The king is coming. If he asks, you must say that this land belongs to the Marquis of Carabas. We've never heard of him, said the haymakers, but we'll do as you say. There they all are in the fields, getting the hay in. Which is happening here, actually, because it is harvest time, isn't it? Soon the king drove past in his carriage with the princess and the miller's son. Tell me, my man, said the king to a haymaker, whose land is this? It belongs to the Marquis of Carabas, your majesty, the man replied at once. Clever man. Meanwhile, Puss had found out that the land was really owned by an ogre who lived in a huge castle nearby. Puss quickly made his way to the castle and knocked on the door. Sir, is it true that you are a very good magician? He asked the ogre. There's the ogre. He looks a bit scary. The ogre, who liked to show off, replied, Yes, it's true. I can even turn myself into a lion. Quick as a flash, the ogre became a fierce, roaring lion. Oh, there he is. 
Puss was so startled that he scrambled to the top of a chest of drawers to hide. When the ogre had changed himself back again, Puss jumped down. Turning into a lion must be easy for someone as big and strong as you, he said. But can you turn yourself into something tiny, like a mouse? Of course I can, roared the ogre. Just watch. In the blink of an eye, the ogre became a little mouse scurrying across the floor. Puss instantly pounced on him and ate him up. There he is. That's what Oscar and Charlie do. They do eat little mice. Now that the ogre is gone, Puss said to himself, this castle will make a very fine home for my master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was most impressed by the handsome young man who owned such rich land and lived in such a magnificent castle. He would make a fine husband for my daughter, the king said. So the miller's son and the princess and Puss lived happily ever after. And now everyone has heard of the Marquis of Carabas. And there's the prince and princess who lived happily ever after. All thanks to Puss in Boots. Isn't that a great story? Bye for now.